There's a lot of confusion about different terms related to coyotes or coyotes if you're from the West. Um, you often hear coyote, coy wolf, coy dog. Uh, I get a lot of questions about those terms and I want to explain them in this video. All right, so let's start with the basics, okay? A coyote is nothing more than a coyote. Its empty DNA is that of a coyote. Kind of like a purebred dog is whatever breed it is. Uh, out west, coyotes are simply full of coyote genetics for the most part. It changes as you head east. Um, there's something that's called a coy dog and a coy wolf and an eastern coyote. Let me go through and explain these so you can understand better and hopefully uh, we can all uh, eliminate some of the misunderstandings out there. Okay, the first thing is a koi dog, all right? A coyote and a dog can mate. They also can have pups, and those pups are fertile. Usually what you have is you have <clears throat> a male coyote, a female domestic dog that would mate. There are very few, if any, um, koi dogs in nature, or I guess out anywhere, according to wildlife biologists. And here's why. What typically happens when a dog mates with a coyote is that the litter is dropped usually in the fall or early winter. So the first problem is that the pups are gonna die. There's not good weather and there's the lowest food point of the year. The second part is the male dog in that scenario doesn't stick around like a male coyote to help raise those pups. So while a coyote and a dog can very successfully mate, and while their pups can also successfully mate, breed, and produce pups of their own, in the natural wild setting, the koi dog itself is very rare because of the reasons that I mentioned. Okay, so the next one then is you often hear about the koi wolf. All right, koi wolf basically refers to the fact that all coyotes from Pennsylvania and New Jersey up through Ontario and Quebec are a combination of coyote DNA and wolf DNA, and that's true. Um, what happened, researchers believe, is that the eastern wolf, uh, which is, some people believe, a subspecies of the gray wolf, some people believe it's its own species, but it is a smaller wolf in Quebec and Ontario. Uh, it's still there today in Algonquin Park. Uh, that's where eastern wolves are. The average size of this wolf is about 70 pounds. It can be 75 pounds, 60 pounds. So this smaller wolf made it with coyotes. And the DNA of the coyotes in the region of the northeastern United States and eastern Canada consists of coyotes which are about 70% coyote and about 20 to 25% wolf or eastern wolf uh, and the remaining 5% or so is domestic dog. So that is a much larger coyote than you have out west or you have in the southeast or the midwest and the reason it's larger is because it does in fact have a higher percentage of a wolf uh, DNA in it. Now, what's confusing is a lot of people will say, okay, well, uh, eastern, the eastern coyote. Well, that's kind of a bad term because the coyotes in Georgia and the coyotes in Massachusetts are very different. The Massachusetts ones are going to be larger because of that wolf DNA. And as you get further south, what happens is you get more domestic dog DNA in coyotes. So a southeastern or a midwestern or a western coyote is going to be smaller than a coyote from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, possibly um, some parts of Ohio, up and through uh, the eastern side of Canada. So hopefully that explains the difference between coyote, koi dog, koi wolf, and you have a little bit better understanding of um, how the koi wolf, I guess, is really part, part wolf and, uh, and part coyote.